Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Seabed. So let's jump right back in. Smiling, Nanai wrapped her, er, not wrapped, snapped her fingers as I replied. That's exactly right! All this historical background is precisely what I love about old architecture. The design, or the current design of Western mansions was born as a result of the trial and error approach of various artisans who all had their own ideas about what the perfect work should look like. <clears throat> when you stand in an old room like that, you cannot help but feel the anxiety and anticipation of the early modern age. However, just as you've said, these kinds of mansions stopped being built after the war, giving way more functional structures. Or giving, yeah, giving away four more uh, function, functional structures. Our cities took a completely different shape compared to what, or compared to what those artists of old envisioned. It's like the war has made our paths diverge. So when I'm in a place like this. I get this sense of being abandoned by time, a vague and poignant, or poignant emptiness similar to watching dinosaur bones in a museum. The strong and deep emotions of old have seeped into the very walls of such places, silently drifting in the air all around people like us, ignorant of time. Anyway, this feeling is precisely what draws me to antiques. Um, I imagine that I must have been... Or, I imagine that must have been pretty hard to understand. <laughs> Sorry. No, I think I can empathize with that on some level. Whew. I just kind of, I kind of just blurted out whatever popped into my head or into my mind. So I'm glad it ended up making some sort of sense. It's a complex feeling, but I think I've experienced it myself. Nice. I obviously don't think it was. I don't, obviously don't think about it as that deeply as a child, or didn't think about it, sorry. But the feeling I got when I saw those pictures is something similar, I think. I was seeing it for the first time, yet for some reason I felt somewhat nostalgic and lonely. I guess I felt complex feelings like that ever since I was young. Anyway, I ended up going off on a tangent there, but basically, I want to turn this mansion into some kind of place that gives me the same kind of feelings as those pictures. I'm not one for flattery, but I like this place. Thanks. I tried, she added with a smile. But it definitely doesn't feel complete yet. There are still a bunch of rooms that I feel like they could use some work, especially when you compare them to those pictures. Atmosphere is not easy to recreate. Yeah. After all, it's usually the unique sensitivities of the age that translate to peculiarities of design. Perhaps it is impossible to perfect or to perfectly recreate it to begin with. However, if I wait for the place to age naturally, I'll end up six feet under before I achieve anything I'm satisfied with. You're planning to do as much as you can for now. Yup, Nanai answered, flashing a happy smile. Anyway, will you help me on this, now that you've heard my story and everything? Sure. To the best of my abilities, at least. I sat down in the chair facing Nanai. She, too, lowered herself into a nearby seat. We spent some time discussing the layout of the rooms in the mansion. We kept rearranging pictures and sketching new plans. We exchanged ideas, nodded to each other, and shook our heads. Whenever there was a prolonged period of silence, Nanai would start humming a song under her breath. A song that most people had likely heard at one point in their lives. At first, I didn't pay much attention, but she, or but the more she repeated that one phrase, "Why does Mary only ever have one sheep, or only ever have sheep?" Huh? I guess that's just the first thing that came to the mind of whoever wrote it. Hmm. Um. Now that you asked, I wonder who Mary even is. She's a girl with a sheep, a character in some Western folktale. The song is actually from a folktale? Mary Sawyer takes, t or takes the sheep to school, 
which causes a commotion. Seriously? I've always thought Mary was the name of the sheep! If that was the case, you'd end up with a sheep owning a sheep. I guess so. That's what I thought was weird. That's why I thought it was weird. I guess I'm stupid! Nanai chuckled to herself. I couldn't help chuckling myself. I bet Auntie doesn't know either. Let's tell her later. I feel like she would know. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Nanai returned her eyes to the pictures and resumed her work. I started moving my hands as well. Hmm, I think this is about it. It didn't take us long as Nanai had already more or less decided what she wanted from the lobby in two rooms before I came. Okay, so we just have to actually set up the furniture and see things for ourselves before we can come to a decision, Nanai uttered under her breath. When will that be? It's still a ways off. Some furniture hasn't even been delivered yet. I'd love to do it right away, but what can you do? Nanai began clearing the pictures and drafts from the table. I stuffed the writing utensils in a case I found lying around. I see. Nanai thanked me and as I handed her the case. I can definitely tell you're a professional. I think those rooms are going to look real awesome now. I'm glad to have been of help. And it was more fun to do it together. I'll prepare you something great for dinner as a token of my appreciation. That sounds nice. Nanai stretched her back and walked off towards the counter, saying she'll make some more coffee. I leaned back against the chair while seeing her off. I suddenly felt my body become heavy. Chico. Hmm. I felt like someone had just called out to me. Opening my eyes, I saw Nanai right in front of me. There were two cups of steaming coffee on the table. Did you get tired? Seems that way. I've been feeling kind of easily fatigued lately. I, er, I brought the cup closer to my chest, letting the smell of the coffee dispel some of my drowsiness. Are you having enough rest? Yes. I see. Um, if there's a problem with the room or something, don't hesitate to tell me. Thanks. But I like that room. There are no problems as far as I'm aware. I swirled the coffee in the cup a bit before taking a sip. I felt the bitterness spread across my tongue. By the way, have you spoken with Auntie since then? Huh? No, why? The last time I spoke to her was when I was or when I went to her underground room with Ko or Kozue and Nadasaki. At least I didn't remember talking to her ever since then. She was asking about you, so I wondered if maybe something happened. Nothing did as far as I'm aware. I see. Nanaya turned her eyes to the picture or pictures and began doing something again. My auntie looks like she has her head in the clouds, but she's actually extremely sharp. I lost something a few times, and when I really or when oops, when I had already given up on seeing them ever again, she just found them right away after hearing a few clues. I don't know why, but when the locals around here have problems, they tend to go to her for advice. If you've got something on your mind, you could try talking to her. I recalled the laid-back air Lily had about her when I met her. I had, or I had to admit, she did feel like someone you could rely on. Hmm, I see you trust her quite a bit. <laughs> I just trust her vast life experience. I'm sure I'll make sure to talk to her if I ever find myself troubled by something. Please do. She's a good listener. Now that I think about it, maybe she just wants to speak to someone new, which perfectly explains her interest in you. As we finished our coffee, Nanai stood up and collected all the materials we piled up on the corner of the table. I think I'll go start preparing dinner. Do you have any other plans for today? No. Um, would you like me to help you with the cooking? Oh, no need. You're the guest here, Sachiko. You should relax. 
we left the cafeteria together and parted ways in the lobby. I heard a knock on the door. It's me! I'm coming in! Oh. I sat up in bed just as someone entered the room. The person closed the door and turned around to face me. Is something wrong? Um, wait, is something wrong? I looked at her face, narrowing my eyes. Not a sake? Hmm? Are you still half asleep? That's strange. I thought I locked the door. Narasaki made a puzzled expression and tried the knob again. Well, it certainly wasn't locked, unless I'm strong enough to break the door without even noticing it. Are you already going to sleep? If that's the case, I'll go find something else to do. It's okay. I thought it was too early to sleep anyway. I'd rather not wake up in the middle of the night later. Okay, then. Narasaki sat down in the chair at the end of the room, right next to the window. The same one she used when we played chess. I feel like I've already had a conversation like this with someone before. Not with me, I hope. Narasaki shrugged her shoulders. For some reason, even an exaggerated motion like that looked natural when she did it. Ah, oh, that's right. Kozue came to my room during the afternoon. She brought this book with her. I imagine it was a bird encycl- whoops. Uh, whatever. I don't know. I imagine it was a bird encyclopedia. Oh, here it is. Narasaki picked up the book from the table. So she really did look for it. I'll have to thank her later. I nodded. Just as I figured, it was something Narasaki asked of her. What were you doing today? I went to watch the lake early in the morning, then I took a l or then I looked- then I looked for something, up in the library until noon, then I guess I played house for a while. You played house? I was almost sure I had misheard. Narasaki made a meaningful smile. Well, what were you doing then? I was working. Working? I tried climbing out of bed, but Narasaki said there was no need. As I was hesitating, Narasaki handed me a cardigan from the chair. I took it from her and placed it over my shoulders. So, what was that you said about work? I told Narasaki about how I helped Nanai redesign her rooms. A miniature garden, huh? I love stuff like that too. Really? A while back, or a while back, I played a game where you, or where you were the mayor and had to build a new town. It was pretty cool. Oh, I know that one. Takako liked those kinds of games too. You build houses, roads, museums, and so on. It took me forever until I figured out the elect or how the electricity plant worked. But uh, figuring things out is, uh, is the part you love, no? Ah, uh, yeah. That's right. There was an odd pause in, er, in her answer. I felt like her easygoing attitude wavered for a barely uh, perceptible moment. However, I couldn't, ask, I couldn't quite ask her about it in a way that made sense, so I had no choice but to change the subject. Um, have you spoken to Lily since then? I had a chat with her while you were sleeping at the end of the corridor. I see. Well, why are you asking? Nanai told me to talk to her if I ever had anything on my mind. Hmm. Narasaki seemed to fall deep into thought. I feel like everyone's been worrying about me ever since I came here. I wonder if I come off as strange. You don't need to worry about you. Uh, yeah, you don't need to worry about being a little strange. Everyone's strange in their own way. It's what makes us unique. We're not manufactured in a factory, you know. Then why is it always me? Everyone, more or less. Or everyone's more or less strange, but some are better at hiding it than others. They do it unconsciously, though. Well, I can imagine reading the mood and not standing out, but isn't it a problem when you can't act normal even when you try? I'm not trying to make everyone worry about me. Narasaki lightly shook her head. I'd say you're actually better at it than most. 
but right now you're tired and it's not working as well as usual. I let out a sigh. Is there anything in particular bothering you? I remembered uh, what I was thinking about before, or in bed before Narasaki came. I was mulling over what you said about the structure of my hallucinations. You mean about how you forgot all about the funeral and the date of the trip? Yes. The way I created an alternate office in my head so I could trick myself into th her thinking Takaka was still around. Hmm. I'm not the kind of person who usually dwells on her past, so I thought I wouldn't have made up such a ridiculous story. But after our conversations, I began wondering if I couldn't have done it without... Or, couldn't have done it without my knowledge. I'm not sure how to explain it, but I did something creative today for the first time in a long while and it was really fun. Nanai seemed to be having fun too, so I asked her why. She said it was fun to imagine how someone would sit in the same chair we, or sh yeah, we relocated to the lobby, and I found myself agreeing. I paused there. I hadn't really collected my thoughts just yet. You mean like imagining Takako sitting in that chair? Yes. I do it during work, too. But even in the past, I kept imagining similar things as I read books. So the fact I came up with an alternate office in my head wasn't all that strange, either. You said there was a reason for it. I did. It might just be that I wanted to meet Takako again, even if it was through a farce. So you're saying that you made Takako or made up Takako just like that lobby's design? That was the idea. I guess that's possible. I pulled out one hand from under the sheets and showed Narasaki my palm and knuckles. When you are creating something, you keep imagining people seeing and using it. You have to judge it from various perspectives. You imagine where it's going to be and how it's going to be used. And then you start thinking from the viewpoint of those people watching or using it. Both Takako and I loved imagining such things, and that's why we chose this kind of field of work. I see. You two did have pretty active imaginations. I wouldn't be surprised if yours worked to, uh, to serve one of your unconscious cravings. That's what I've been thinking after designing the rooms with Nanai. An unconscious craving, huh? However, you should know that it stops being unconscious the moment you acknowledge it. Now that you're aware of Takako's situation, there's no reason why you should keep seeing her. Yes, yeah, so what's your opinion about that? Narasaki slumped in the chair and crossed her legs. Her index finger and thumb went on, or were on her chin, indicating that she was in deep thought. I think you're on the right track. Don't you find it a bit too simple, though? Depends on how you feel about it. Remember that it's all inside you. Hmm. It makes sense at the very least. Narasaki pulled out her usual notebook from her pocket, placed it on the table, and flipped it open. Is there anything in particular bothering you? She asked, taking out her pen. I suppose the explanation makes sense, but then what about the hallucination I saw the night you came? As I've said before, you don't get cured overnight. Have you seen anything else since then? No, that was the only one since coming here. Hmm. Okay, but even if we say that my hallucinations have been more or less cured, what about the ringing in my ears? I haven't had that since coming here either. Could it have been a result of stress caused by the hallucinations? I don't know, but that sounds like a solid guess. Narasaki placed the pen on the table with an audible bump. She quickly picked it up again, surprised by the sound she herself had caused. Anything else? Those were the only things bothering me. Other than that, and I've said this before, I feel unusually exhausted and sleep a lot. They say your brain arranges uh, for information in your head as you sleep. Maybe it's related to the fact you're on your way to getting better. Or perhaps you simply didn't or don't ha get enough sleep at night, sorry. Uh, for example, you keep thinking about these things in bed instead of sleeping. In any case, I don't think you should pay, or pay it too much mind. You're on vacation. You can sleep as much as you want. 
I could sleep as much as I wanted. But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.